So we're working on the B1 reflection. <clears throat> and there are the video notes. Hopefully you enjoy those. And let's go ahead and look at problem one. The table shows the results of the New Hampshire Republican presidential primary on January 10, 2012. Which of the following list of graphs are all appropriate ways of presenting this data? So we have one thing you have to take into account. You cannot um, overlap, so you can't have someone choose Mitt Romney, Romney and Ron Paul at the same time. So bar graphs are things that allow overlap. That's okay. Um, we can actually do a we can't do a box plot because this is quantitative, not quantitative data. This is categorical data, but we can do a pie chart. So this pie charts are for things that are uh, add up to 100%. Bar graphs are for categorical data of any type. So that would be our answer. Let me go ahead and submit. <clears throat> Remember, you can submit as you answer as you're doing these web assigns. Doesn't ding you. The graph below summarizes responses of dog owners to the question, where in the car do you let your dog ride? <clears throat> Which of the following statements is true? So, one, the vertical graph exaggerates the difference between the percentage of people who let their dogs ride in the driver's lap versus the passenger's lap. And you can see it chopped it off a little. I'm leaning towards saying that's true because technically this looks like 10%, but it's actually 20%. So, let's see. Could we present this data in a pie chart? Let's see. Well, it adds up to more than 100%, so no. You can tell that each owner gave more than one answer to the question because they allowed them in the back seat and the front passenger seat. This adds up to more than 100%. Um, a majority of owners do not allow their um, pets to ride in the front passenger seat. That's false because you can see over 50% too. And then you have Roughly twice as many pets are allowed to sit in the front passenger seat as in the passenger's lap. So this is what? Almost 60%. And this is 30 some percent. That's probably, it's close, but it's not quite twice as much. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And there you go. That is correct. Yay. In a study of the link between high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease, a group of white males aged 35 to 64 was followed for five years. At the beginning of the study, each man had his blood pressure measured and it was classified as, as either low systolic blood pressure, less than 140, or high, more than 140, 140 or more. <clears throat> the following table gives the number of men in each blood pressure category and the number of deaths from cardiovascular disease during the five-year period. So, based on these data, which of the following statements is correct? So, um, let's see. These data probably understate the link between high blood pressure and the death from cardiovascular disease because men will tend to understate their blood, true blood pressure. That's probably not true, which means all of these is correct is probably not true. Um, um, although there were more deaths in the high blood pressure group, this is expected because there were 1,500 more men in the group. Hmm. Well, let's see. This is five times as much. That's not five times as much. I'm saying no. These data are consistent with the idea that there's a link between blood pressure and death from cardiovascular disease. I'm leaning towards that one. Um, the mortality rate for proportion of deaths for men with high blood pressure is five times that of men with low blood pressure. Well, you could basically say 50 over, this is five times as many deaths, but your sample is not five times as many. So, and actually it doesn't look like, yeah, you can't say it's five times as many because it's not the same sample size. <clears throat> Excuse me allergy season. Okay, 
And boom, that was correct. Yay. What percent of students in Mrs. Silverman's survey are in third period and prefer burgers? So you're going to take the seven. Oh, let's go ahead. Let me take a picture of this. Actually, I can probably copy the image. There we go. And I'm going to go to my blank PDF. So this is for my B reflections, and I'll paste this here. Boom. Let's go ahead and do some totals. And I'm probably going to need to get a calculator to do that. Well, not really. <clears throat> so we have 4, 7, and 11. <clears throat> that adds up to 22. Then uh, 4, 4, 4 is 12. I'll adjust my font sizes here in a second. We've got 7 in this group, 1 in that group, and I'm guessing 19 in that group. <clears throat> Let's cut that down on the font size. Well, that almost fits. Let's try 10. Wow, that didn't really change much, did it? Okay, maybe 9. There we go. Eh, I'd say we were just as well with the font size with the 12. All right. It'll be, it won't quite line up. It'll be fine. <coughs> <coughs> so we have 22 plus 12 plus 7 plus 1 plus 19 is 61. So my total here is 61. Then I can add up totals here. We've got 13. Then we have 24. Is that right? <coughs> Excuse me, actually, let me pause for a second. Okay, now we have 11, 4, 3, and 6. So that looks like 24 as well, right? And just to double check, I will go ahead and add these up and make sure I get 61. So I got 13 plus 24 plus 24 is also 61. So we have the right numbers. Now the question it was asking is, what percent of students are in third period and prefer burgers? So we'll go ahead and paste that down here. And so, <coughs> third period and prefer burgers. So third period, burgers. And it says it's pretty much out of everyone. So what we're going to say is take the 7 divided by 61, and you're going to get a decimal. I basically got a calculator on the side here in case you're wondering what I'm doing. 0 0.1148. It's really like 4754, blah, 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 blah. All right. So, um, oh, yeah, that's right. So move the decimal over twice. So we're going to change this to percent. And it's basically 11.5%. So let's go back to our answer choices. 11.5%. What percent of sixth period students prefer tacos? Well, the thing is to notice, let me go ahead and put that. Five. Well, it said of six periods, so that's an important thing to know. So it's of six periods. So I only care about six period. Let me change colors so I'm not just being clear. We'll do pink. Of six period. Well, that means we're just doing six period right there. So if I were to answer that, people who prefer tacos is 4 divided by 24. So that's going to be 0 0.1, and it keeps going, by the way, or basically 16.7%. Move the decimal over twice to change from uh, a decimal to percent. So just in case you forgot, two times. So <coughs> let's click on that. What percent of students who prefer tacos are in sixth period? So that's a different question, all right? What percent of students who prefer tacos are in sixth period? So we're looking only at people who prefer tacos. I'm going to do orange. Oops, that's not what I want. I want this. And we'll do, we'll say we have pink, we have yellow. I guess we'll do orange. Who prefer tacos? So that means this is our big group right here. 
So um, six period, it looks like it's pretty equal. So it would be there are four who, who are in six period. Oops, let me change my color here. Uh, out of 12 who prefer tacos. So you're going to get 0.3, et cetera. It keeps repeating or basically 33.3%. Go back here, 33.3%. Let me go ahead and hit submit just so we can get those answers recorded. And they are all correct. Yay. Okay, What? so now we're going to go ahead and go to some of our older material. What type of study is this? Remember, your midterm covers everything, so you don't want to forget everything. Uh, children who are exposed to secondhand cigarette smoke have an increased risk for lung disease later in life. Researchers followed more than 70,000 adults who have never smoked. Over the 22-year study, people who lived in a household with a smoker when they were children were 31% more likely to die from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, so the question is, <coughs> and I think we've done this in a review before, by the way, is what type of study this is. We're just observing. We're not making people smoke, and we're not recording everyone. We did it a sample, but we watched what we, did, what we did. We didn't just sample and ask a question. We were actually recording data, so that would be an observational study. Um, and then we also have the monkeys. I know we've done this in our review before, so hopefully you remember. This one was an experiment because the monkeys don't get to choose. So let's, let's look at the study. We're almost done. An effective HIV vaccine has eluded scientists for decades for two reasons. There are dozens of strains, and it rapidly mutates. Okay, so they developed a new mosaic vaccine that includes pieces of many different strains, and they've gotten promising results. And they had several do dosages and formulations were given to 390, oh, it's not monkeys, healthy volunteers from South Africa and Eastern Africa. They showed a, so the one we did in the review was the monkeys, but wait a second, okay. They showed a significant anti-HIV immune response. In the test of 72 rhesus monkeys, so we're now we're back to the monkeys, the formulation that appeared most promising among humans protected 67% of the monkeys from the simian form of HIV. So what is this? The monkeys didn't get to choose their treatment. It was imposed on them. This is an experiment. And yay, I have 80%. Now I just have to share here something that I learned, or if you had trouble with anything I explained, something that I struggled with. Right here, and you get your 20 points.